Hello and welcome back to the Bliss Bean. I just got done doing my monthly planning and I put together this little sheet of what goals I want to work on this month, what I'm excited about for the month, what habit I want to work on, what book I want to read. If you're interested in my monthly planning routine, I do have a whole video on that. So I think I'm going to hang this up over my desk so that over the next few weeks I can just keep looking at it and be reminded of how I want September to go. But this video isn't really about September, it's about August. This is an August monthly recap. So let's jump right into it. It. I would say my biggest accomplishment from this month was definitely putting together my 30 day email challenge. By this point it has already been going for a few days but you can still sign up if you want. You'll still get all 30 days of the emails, you just won't get them like at the same time as everyone else which really doesn't matter. And then I also created an ebook to go along with it. Doing like a big email challenge and putting together an ebook were both things that I saw myself doing in the future with my blog at some point. I'm very happy with how it all turned out and I hope that you guys enjoy doing the challenge as well. Okay, second accomplishment also related to my blog was that I really kept up with my content calendar that I had planned out. So some other months I've struggled a little bit, especially in July because in July I was traveling for a couple of weeks and I was very idealistic and I thought that I would be able to keep publishing content, but life doesn't work that way. This was the first month in a while that I I consistently hit every blog post and video that I plan to publish. Um, I think I was only late on one thing and that was the productivity apps video that I published recently. It was like close to midnight that I finished editing it and I was super tired and I got to exporting it but as you know exporting takes a while so I like published and promoted it the next morning so I think that's still pretty good. Third thing is another blog thing. It was a busy month for me with blogging. I did my first collaboration with another blogger. So I've been wanting to do one for a while and I was actually planning to like reach out to some bloggers in August, but I just got busy and kind of pushed it off to the side. But then I got a message from Tara who is another team blogger and her blog is called Upstart. I'll link to it in the description. She suggested doing a collaboration and I was like, sure, let's do it. And so we each did a post on what we would have in our backpacks going back to school. So that was not only a fun way to like bring new readers to each other's blogs, but it also just pushed me creatively. Okay, now finally moving on to the non-blog related things. Number four is that I did two senior portrait shoots, which isn't a ton, but I was really happy with how they turned out. I can definitely see my photography improving a lot, not even just in terms of like the finished product, but like my confidence in myself and my ability to pose people and think of creative ideas on the spot. Um, number five is that I did like a little digital planning experiment. So I was for the longest time a very loyal paper planner. I had tried I tried digital planning before but it had just never ever worked for me and I thought that it never would. But then I was watching one of Rowena Tsai's videos. I really hope I'm saying her name right. Either way you should definitely check out her channel. I'm going to link to it in the description. She had a video where she was talking about planning and she showed this tool called To Do which is pronounced To Do but is written T-E-U-X-D-E-U-X -E -E and the thing that really intrigued me about it was that you could see your entire week at a glance. It looked exactly like how my paper planner looked except just on a computer. I just decided to commit for one week because like even if it hadn't gone well I would have felt good about having tried it. But it did go well. It went really really well. I'm gonna link to some Instagram posts where I talked in more detail about what exactly I liked about digital planning. Another thing I did, I'm not really sure what number we're on at this point, but I uploaded a bunch of old clothes to Poshmark which I had been meaning to do for a long time and I made my first sale actually in like a few hours. Since then I haven't sold anything else but it just like gave me hope that you can actually sell things on Poshmark. I think I'll link to my profile in the description if you're interested in buying any of my clothes. Finally the last thing is that I think I finally discovered like a magic number of hours that I need to sleep. This entire summer I've been trying to figure out how much I need to sleep to feel well rested but not like overslept. I tried going by sleep cycles which are supposedly 90 minutes long but that never worked out for me. I tried using the sleep cycles alarm clock app which uses the microphone to like measure how much you're moving around in your sleep and then wake you up based on when your lightest stage of sleep is. The only problem with that though was when I sleep my head is on the far end so I have walls all around me. I don't have a bedside table that I can like set my phone down on. So what I did was I started sleeping the other way so that I could pull up a chair and put my phone down there but I've gotten so used to sleeping towards that direction that I think switching messed up my sleep. So that failed and then I just tried like a 
experimenting with different numbers of hours. And finally, I think in August, I found that approximately seven or a little bit less than seven hours of sleep, if I set my alarm clock like that, I wake up easily and I feel pretty well rested during the day. I feel like by making this video, I'm gonna jinx it and all of a sudden seven hours is not gonna work for me anymore. But hopefully if I just stick to this, I can feel well rested all the time, which is like the ultimate goal. Probably not gonna happen during the school year, but a girl can dream, right? Okay, next section. I got the opportunity to babysit for a couple of days. I got my first family photo session booked. So I got approached by someone who wanted family photos and I told them that I'd never done them but that I was willing to try. And so now that's happening. And then also the blog collaboration that I did, um, some food companies on Instagram contacted me. And I know it's really important to like be proactive in life and constantly be seeking out new opportunities for yourself. But I think it's important to also be open to things that might come your way and take some time to show gratitude attitude for the opportunities that just fall in your lap. Okay, on to this month's lessons. So my first lesson that I learned was don't be afraid of experimenting. I know there's like good and bad experimenting, so I'm obviously referring to the good kinds of experimenting. Um, what I experimented with was digital planning. I was kind of scared to do that, but I decided to do it for a week and I found something I'm really happy with. So you should never feel like you have to get things perfect on the first try because that rarely happens and the fear of trying to be perfect can paralyze you from even trying anything. So you have to accept that you're gonna experiment Experiment, you're gonna fail but eventually that's gonna lead you to what's right for you that was very deep actually all of my lessons this month are pretty deep so settle in guys for two more deep lessons my second lesson was that your intuition will tell you when you need to say no to something and you have to listen to it so I would say this month there were two main things that I said yes to that I later regretted and I can clearly remember that before saying yes to both of those things I didn't feel right about it I didn't feel excited about it it's hard to explain you just it just doesn't feel right. It's a lot easier to just say no as soon as you feel that feeling instead of waiting, saying yes, and then having to backtrack and apologize and explain. So basically what I learned was to listen to what my gut is telling me. Okay, and then the last lesson was to not be shy about my blog. So I've had this blog for almost a year and a half now, I think. In the very beginning, I was very careful to keep it completely hidden from anyone I knew in real life. And then slowly I told a couple of friends, I told my family. A couple of people from school found it on Instagram and followed it. So eventually I reached a point where I was just like, I'm not even going to try to keep it hidden. If anyone from school wants to follow me, that's fine. But then a really big step for me was when I created my 30 day email challenge. I knew that the only way I could really grow with this was if I had complete and total confidence in what I was doing. So even though I was very scared, one morning I went on my personal timeline on Facebook and I posted about the challenge. My heart was beating fast and then I was even more scared to check back on the post. Obviously I knew that none of my friends were gonna say anything mean about it. I just really didn't want to acknowledge the fact that people I knew in real life were looking at my content, possibly watching my videos, reading my writing. It was just very scary to me but the reaction that I got was all worth it because I don't know why I ever doubted that oh my god this is gonna be my first time getting emotional in a video. I don't know why I ever doubted doubted that everyone would support me. I got some really, really kind comments from my friends. I got a lot of people signed up for the challenge. So if you're kind of like me and you have like an online presence, whether it's a blog or just an Instagram account or anything, and you hide it from people that you know in real life simply because you're not really confident in it, I would encourage you to just go ahead and take that leap of faith. I know it can be easier to open up to complete strangers on the internet than it is to show people that you know in real life this other side of you but in the end it's worth it because having the support of people that you know and care about in real life really motivates you and will push you to get better. Okay, now that we've gotten through that very deep portion of this video, my book of the month was The Power of a Positive Note by I just looked it up and it's William Uri. I wanted to read this book because I'm about to enter my senior year of high school and I already feel a little overbooked and so I wanted to get better at saying no to things because that is a weakness of mine and so I just wanted to share like two of the main things that I pulled out from this book. One is that negative emotions are basically an indicator like a check engine light telling you that something is wrong that you need to say no to something. And then another thing is that to help you say no you should think about what you're saying yes to. Um, so what 
one of the reasons that we might say yes when we actually want to say no is because we feel like we don't deserve time to ourselves, that we don't deserve to have free time. You want to like make it clear to yourself that you're not just clearing your calendar for the sake of clearing your calendar. You want to know exactly what it is that you're making room for. So maybe it's working on one of your own projects. Maybe it's spending time with your family. Thinking about that will motivate you to be more firm when you're saying no. All right, and that was my 30 second version of that book. In this part of the video, I would normally talk about what course I worked on, but this month I actually decided to no longer do a course of the month. Partly it's because I'm going back to school, so I'm already going to have plenty of classes and courses on my plate. And the months that I did do courses, I really didn't feel like I got that much out of it. And so I'm not saying there's no benefit to learning or to doing courses, but for me, at least personally, it's just too much of a burden and there isn't enough of a payoff. So I just decided to let go of that. All right, so next is what I've been watching this month. I watched a couple of movies, but mainly the one that I remember is To All the Boys I've Loved Before. So I actually read the book by Jenny Han at the beginning of the summer, so I watched it with my friend who also read the book, and it was really good. If you haven't seen it yet, I can confirm that it is as cute as everyone on Twitter is saying that it is. And then in terms of YouTube channels, I haven't been watching that much, but mainly I've been watching Lavender and Rowena Tsai. They're both like lifestyle, productivity, and self-care youtubers their videos are so good and so inspiring um, I'm gonna link to them as well you should definitely check them out and then lastly BTS had their comeback this month they released love yourself answer which is the last album of their love yourself series and then the main song was idol which they released a trailer and then a music video for and both of those were so good I always love their music videos but I think this one especially it was just so colorful and creative and it just inspired me to be creative so if if you haven't seen that video yet, I'm going to link to it in the description. Next section is what I've been listening to. So actually on Instagram stories, I asked you guys if you want me to bring back the monthly playlist that I used to do on my blog and you voted 100% yes. So I'm going to do that instead of talking about what I've been listening to in this video, I'm going to put it on the blog post that like accompanies this video and I'll link to it in the description. All right, and now it's time for the wrap up. So. This month was a very blog focused month. So I actually just checked my time tracking app and I think I spent twice as many hours this month working on my blog than I have any other month. Even if like my blog doesn't grow as quickly as I wanted to, the growth that I've been seeing in the quality of my blog posts really inspires me to keep going. In any case, the skills that I'm gaining from doing this, everything is gonna come in handy, I think, no matter what path I decide to take in life. So yeah, after all this, what I have to say to conclude this video is August was a good month and that's it so don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed watching this video and until the next time that I see you bye